Yeah, so do you remember a few videos ago when I said this? Yeah, so this is my fourth video talking about Blair, which raises one very important question. Do you reckon Ruby Frank is jealous? Because I feel like I'm just moving on from an ex at this point, right? I made like 37 videos talking about Ruby Frank, and now all of a sudden I'm making a bunch of videos on another creator. Like, I reckon she's raging. So Ruby, if you are watching this video, just want to let you know, haven't forgot about you, all right? I'm sure in a few weeks you will do something very shitty, and I'll make another video talking about you, and it'll be back to normal, all right? Don't you worry. Well, it turns out Ruby must have watched that video because she has made sure that I no longer speak about other people and I only speak about her. I'm sure they're probably somewhere having a party right now celebrating over the fact that I'm finally speaking about them again. I mean, that's if parties aren't part of distortion, which they probably are. I mean, what isn't part of distortion nowadays? But yeah, I did want to take a look at some of the recent clips of Geordie and Ruby because, as you can imagine, they haven't really got better. But then also Shari, who is Ruby's daughter, has came out and said a bunch more stuff about Ruby and the whole situation, so I thought we could speak about that as well. But before we do get any further in the video, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so, because I'm blah, blah, uh, blah, blah. You know the crack by now. I'm trying to hit 400k, you know, so uh, if you could help out, that'd be great. But yeah, a few of my last videos in A Passengers has been from stuff that I've seen on Reddit, and today's no different because I just thought, you know what, haven't spoke about Ruby and Jordy in a while, I wonder what they're up to, so I went over to Reddit and unfortunately I found out, because it seems like Jordy and Ruby are up to like a new chapter in their cult, you know, now they've got everyone's attention and people are listening to them, or at least like a minority of people are listening to them. They not only have the power to change some people's parental techniques for the worst, they now seem to think they have the power to change people's opinions on a lot of other stuff. Because Mums of Truth, the page that apparently started off to just give advice to mothers on how to look after their kids better has now went political. It's an intellectualized position because who is ultimately responsible for those uh, illegal aliens coming across the border? Illegal aliens has always just like hit me as a bit of a weird term. I get that some people use it as like an official term, but illegal aliens just sounds like very like dehumanizing, don't you think? The Biden administration is responsible. Now, I'm not interested <laughs> in getting into a political discussion. I'm not interested in getting into a political discussion, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Come on, Jordy, let's hear your politics. Biden stopped the wall, and so there's an open space, and people are coming over by the tens of thousands, and he's not stopping it. All of us know that. Sorry, there's just something so wrong to me about them, like, expressing their political beliefs in a page that's supposed to be all about truth, by the way. Like, how many times have we seen them reply to comments in their Facebook group when people have a different opinion to them, and their response is always like, no, this page isn't about opinions, it's all about the truth. But now, all of a sudden, they're expressing their political beliefs to try and get other people to obviously, like, agree because they feel like they have that power. Like, it's just all a bit sketchy to me. And these people are not victims, by the way. I just want you to see that. The people who are coming across the border illegally, they know what they're doing is illegal. It's illegal. Like, stealing stuff from a store, illegal. Not victims. I mean, if that's not the most privileged take I've ever heard in my life. Maybe stop to think, like, why they have to, like, leave their country and try and find, like, a better life. You not thought about that? No? Actually, one documentary I watched very recently is about an uh, ex-UFC fighter, now fights for PFL, called Francis Ngannou, right? And he is someone who had to leave his home country because of really awful conditions. And he went into details about how dangerous the journey was to try and better his life. He literally had to witness people he knew die on this journey because of how horrible the conditions were. And then Jordy sat here in like a million dollar house with a sofa that is way too big for the house and she's talking about how these people aren't victims. Like, how the fuck would you know? And let's not act as if these people wouldn't love to enter the country legally as well, by the way, but they can't because of their situation and how the system works. The way she's describing it is if these people are complete monsters, right? But yeah, I should make it clear. I obviously don't know the ins and outs of American politics, right? I'm not actually American, like, believe it or not. But it's just the way she's talking about it and trying to make it seem as if these people aren't victims in any way and that we shouldn't feel sorry for them. It just seems like such a privileged outlook and now you're not even just talking about like the immigration system in your country, you're now using this as a bit of a personal attack and you're saying that these people aren't going through like tough times, we shouldn't feel sorry for them, which to me sounds very, very damaging. But even away from all of that, because clearly we have very different opinions, right? Me and Jordy don't exactly agree on anything it seems. But to me, there's just something so wrong about Jordy and Ruby expressing these opinions on a like a motherly advice page, especially when we've seen how extreme their beliefs are and they've managed to actually gain somewhat of an audience. There are some people that listen to them now, and not only have they managed to change the opinions of mothers in what I would describe as in a much worse way, in a way that it doesn't even seem like you want to care for your children or love your children because you won't accept them for who they are, but now they're also using their other opinions. And I can only imagine that this might just become like a theme on this page now, where they just start expressing opinions that have nothing to do with parenting anymore just to get people to change their mind. It just, it seems a bit weird to me. 
day. So they're not victims. So don't feel sorry for the people who are being moved around the country. Don't feel sorry for them. Like, do you not have any sympathy for humans at all? I feel like if Geordie was in the position of a lot of these people, she would probably feel like they deserve sympathy. But you know, uh, because she hasn't really had to struggle. I mean, look at the house they're in currently. She doesn't seem to think that they deserve sympathy in any way. It's weird, man. But there's other comments from the other side who are allowing these borders to be open when they're in front of their house. They're like, this is so horrible that you are demoralizing human beings and using them as political pawns. It's like, no, no, you want them in here so you can use them as a political pawn so that they'll vote for you and all sorts of other reasons you want them in here. But I'm pretty sure if these people came to the country, they wouldn't be able to vote for like a very long time. I'm not exactly sure how it works in America, but I'm sure that would be the case like it is in most countries. In front of where <laughs> Biden lives, here, here are your choices. Here are your choices. Here they let, are. Let There's me reflect Juan to you. Juan and Jose and... Um, <laughs> Ismeralda. <laughs> right then, eh? What a way to fucking go at the stereotypes, Jordy. Look how smug she is as well. She's like, yeah, they're, they're the names of the horrible people, aren't they? Just evil, evil people, these two, man. But yet again, I think the big problem here is the way they're expressing this and the platform they're using to express these opinions. Like, you have an advice page for mothers that started off as that, right? They were trying to give advice to mothers and it actually wasn't even that extreme at first. And then it just got worse and worse and worse. And now they really are trying to brainwash people, it seems. But yeah, anyways, let's move on to Shari because she has been speaking out, like kind of talking about the family situation and everything. I mean, she first posted this on her story. It's like a repost of um, Hank Smith. I'm not really sure who that is. But the quote is, don't let someone convince you that you are holding a grudge when you are holding a boundary. Obviously, some people think that that might be slightly directed towards like Ruby or the whole family situation in general. I'm not 100% sure. And then Shari also had a bit of a Q&A on her Instagram where she answered a few questions and some of them just so happened to be about the family. Have you been in contact with any immediate family members? This is something that's very near and dear to my heart. And as I said over six months ago, I'm not in contact with anybody in my immediate family. As I've said earlier, rumors and gossip don't help the situation. So yeah, obviously she is still keeping a distance and what I've seen that is also very nice is with the other family members in terms of like Ruby's like siblings, Shari seems to be very close to them and seems to be having a great time. I mean, she even answers a few more questions saying like how great it's been to see the other people. She seems very, very happy. And I do get what she's saying here about like the rumors and the gossip as well, because I feel like it can go a bit too far. And maybe I might be even guilty of this, like previously kind of just debating in my head, like, oh, what has happened? I wonder. I think especially when we were trying to like work out if like Kevin and Ruby had split or like if Kevin sees the kids anymore, that is just complete speculation there really isn't any statements to prove that. But yeah, I do just kind of want to stick to actual statements like this from now on. I feel like it's a bit more fair to everyone involved. But yeah, as you're saying here, nothing's changed in over six months and she's not in contact with her media family. And then she goes on to answer some more questions. Now, this one's not directed to the whole family situation, but what I did find interesting is, if you remember in one of my earlier videos talking about Mums of Truth, we spoke about a video where Ruby was severely against medication. And she was giving some very, like, dangerous advice to mothers about medication. Well, luckily, it seems like Ruby is the only person who has this opinion in the family because we got a question here that says you doing okay mental health wise and Shari says therapy and medication has been amazing the biggest thing I'm working through is OCD especially religiously but I'm happier than I've ever been and this isn't the first time that we've seen that Shari clearly has a mind of her own she can think for herself and she's not going to have the same opinions as Ruby now that's very obvious by the fact they don't speak but we've seen like Shari post like the LGBTQ colours on like a story clearly she doesn't have the same opinions as Ruby and she seems to be doing a lot better she keeps talking about how happy she's been recently and honestly it's great to see here we have another question that says next YouTube vid and Shari replies by saying at this point I think the YouTube chapter of my life has closed I've enjoyed having my life be a bit more private but I'll continue to do Instagram and I think again this is another clear example of why these family channels aren't a good idea because your children who have been on camera their entire lives they've had their whole lives on display might grow up and decide they don't want to be on camera and I feel like we're going to see this a lot more in the future when these kids do obviously get old enough because obviously a lot of them are still very young but yeah I think some of these family channels just believe that their kids definitely want to be on camera and they're all enough to make their own mind up and they're not going to change their mind when they become adults but clearly that's not always the case but it's not even with just with shari by the way either we've seen like multiple people come out now and have this very same opinion how do you handle being a public figure and the family issues being so public college has felt like a fresh start for me and i've been able to redefine myself it's hard having everything public but i remind myself that nobody online knows the whole story or knows what's going on it helps me draw closer to my friends and family that actually understand and yeah i do think that is a very important thing and like i said i've probably been guilty of this in like previous videos kind of like debating and like almost just kind of talking about the rumors and like speculating almost which is why in like more recent videos i feel like i just want to like target like the actual facts and base it on statements that people have said 
and not try to speculate too much because you never know what's true, right? But yeah, I think the main things to take away from today's situation or topic or whatever you want to call it is that Julian and Ruby are still spewing utter nonsense and trying to brainwash people in a very strange way. And luckily, it seems like Shari is doing a lot better and seems to be a lot happier, which is only a good thing, obviously. But yeah, either way, I'm going to leave the video there. If you did enjoy, please do a like down below, subscribe if you are new, and then also let me know any topics to talk about in future videos over on my Instagram. It's at Callum Market. It's always linked in the description. That's where I find out about a lot of these topics and I get to see exactly what you guys want me to post videos about. And uh, yeah, until the next one, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, good. Bye.